Hello my dear students this is Swati Chavla welcome to my series of python programming in our previous video we have covered the basic introduction of functions in python so today we will be discussing some more concepts related to functions let's start this video with a program of addition of two numbers okay first we will do it without argument and without return let now i am opening up python ideally so first of all this function definition will start with def keyword so i am going to give the name of my function as add this is without argument so i am not passing any argument here okay to call this function what we have to do the name of function call so we are not passing any argument here so we will accept the two values from the user here only inside the function i am writing enter first number and here p of int input enter second number input function is used to take input from the user and int function is used to convert the number into integer because this input function returns a string value so now i am going to add this number what i have done the numbers which will be entered by user will be in variable a and b in this statement i have added these two numbers and store the result in variable c i am going to print this now print addition of two numbers the result is in variable c so execution will start from here this add function will be called it will ask the input from the user two numbers then those numbers will be added and then addition will be displayed in the variable c now have you noticed in this function in this program i have not passed any argument and this function is not returning any value also i am executing this now Save yes. Just a second. Yeah, enter first number. Suppose I have entered twenty. Second number, let's say eighty. So addition will be hundred. Okay. So now I am doing modifications in this program to return the value. Instead of printing the value here, what I am going to do this now? Return C means after calculation. this function will return the result in variable c so i need the variable here also which will store the result okay so i will write here print addition equals to comma now what will i write result not c okay this function when it will calculate the addition of two numbers it will store the result in variable c and this function returns c which will be stored in the variable result so here i am going to present print the variable result i am going to execute this now 50 250 the addition is 300 okay now we can do this also instead of writing it here i am direct writing it here also add and just the name of a function call Suppose eighty, ninety, one seventy. Okay, what we have done in this, the statement will be executed. Addition equals to this will get printed. Then function call statement is here. This statement will call this function. Two numbers will be inputted from the user. The addition will be calculated, and the variable which is returned by this function will be displayed here. Okay, so we have done the program. with return type and without return type okay now how to make a program to add two numbers with arguments i am deleting it from here now because we have to pass the values to the user now i am writing it here int input enter first number okay 
and same for second and the second number I'm going to change this now after this we have to make a function call when we have called this function now we are passing these two values so this function will also need two variables let's suppose num1 or num2 or you can write here as a and b also okay so what i will do here num1 plus num2 because the values which we have to add now are in the variables num1 and num2 not in a and b so return c first we will do it okay fine with return type so here we need a variable also and then print the result okay addition equals to answer will be in the variable result so execution will start from here now int input enter first number the user will enter the first number which will get stored in the variable a okay after that enter second number it will get stored in the variable b then result equals to will be as it is then add a comma b this function will be called and the values which are in a and b will be passed to num1 and num2 these two will, values will be added result will store in the variable c so this function will return the value in the variable result and here it will get printed okay I'm going to execute this now. Enter first number. Let's suppose 80, 70. Let's suppose, and the addition is 50. Now. Okay. I hope this concept is clear to you now. Moving forward, this we have done now. User defined functions with argument and without argument, without return type. Okay. So this you can check it out now. Now the question arises. Can a function return multiple values at the same time? The answer is yes. A Python is the only language till now which can return in which a function can return multiple values at the same time. Now let's see this example. This calculate function, fun, uh, sorry, control will start from here. Enter value of a and p. This calculate function you will call. Okay, these two values x and y will be passed to variables a and b. Following functions will get performed. And see here return add, comma, subtract, comma, multiply, comma, divide. These four variables will be returned by this function. Now your, it's your choice. Either you can take here four variables. Okay, so this result will get printed. And the second method is it can return tuple also. Let me show you here. Now see here I have returned these four variables but here I am writing only one variable that is result. The data type of this this one result variable will be tuple. So to display the result you have to iterate your loop. Now we will move to our next topic parameters and arguments and functions. Okay. Now let's see here. This is the difference between arguments and parameters. What are arguments? Values being passed are called arguments and values being received are called parameters. In this example, see here. This is the function call statement, kel c x comma y. And this is the function definition statement. From here, let me take one pointer. Yeah. Okay, from here the values will be passed to here. You can see this now and this. Okay, so this function, this here, it is passing the arguments and this is receiving the arguments. Now move to our definition. Values being passed are called arguments. So values are passing from here. So that means these are your arguments. Okay. Next, the values being received is called parameters. In your example, here at this point, the values are receiving by the function. So, these are your parameters. Next difference is arguments appear in the function call statement. These are your arguments and this is your function call statement. 
एंड हेयर पैरामीटर्स अपियर इन फंक्शन हेडर और फंक्शन डेफिनेशन स्टेटमेंट नाउ सी हेयर दीज आर पैरामीटर्स एंड दिस इज योर कंप्लीट फंक्शन डेफिनेशन पार्ट सो वैल्यूज बीइंग पास आर कॉल्ड आर्गुमेंट्स एंड वैल्यूज बीइंग रिसीव्ड आर कॉल्ड पैरामीटर्स नेक्स्ट डिफरेंस इज आर्गुमेंट्स अपियर इन द फंक्शन कॉल स्टेटमेंट एंड पैरामीटर्स अपियर इन द फंक्शन हेडर स्टेटमेंट arguments are also known as actual arguments and actual parameters and parameters are also known as formal parameters and formal argument this concept is important from cbse board exams point of view also okay so note down this plus with example also whenever any theoretical question comes in your exam you have to explain with the help of an example Our next topic is types of arguments. There are basically three types of arguments: positional arguments, default arguments, and keyword arguments. The questions which you have done till now are all the examples of positional arguments. Means in positional arguments, suppose here the x and y values are there, c and a and b. Okay. So first value will be passed to first parameter. and second value will be passed to second parameter means according to position we are passing the values so these are called your positional arguments next is your default arguments default arguments means if let's suppose in our function we are not passing the value of any argument we are assuming its default value so let's i will show you with an help of an example so that it will be clear to you also i am opening my python ldle def let's suppose i want to calculate the interest principal rate and time these three values will be passed simple interest equals to principal into rate into time divided by 100 and i am going to print it here also okay and i am going to here call this function Let's suppose value of p is five thousand, rate is ten, and time is two. What I'm going to here p r n t, and let's suppose for your convenience, I'm printing the values also of principal in variable p, rate in variable r, and time in variable t. Okay. Fine now. So when we are executing this program, na these three values will be passed here. In this, I have not used the concept of default argument. I am. I have used the concept of positional argument. Now let's suppose I am assigning the default value of T as five. Okay. Now listen it very carefully. This is your default argument. The first condition for default argument is that the default value. Which you are assigning to any variable must be on the rightmost side. Clear? जो भी आप default value देंगे किसी भी variable की वो always आपकी right side पर हो. ठीक है? Now if any user provides the value, ठीक है? I have provided the value of time as two. So this value will get overwrite. Let's execute this now. What the value of principal it has taken? Five thousand. Rate ten and time. Default value it has not taken. It has taken the value which is provided by the user. Now let's suppose I am not providing this value. Okay. So now it will take the default value of time as five. In our next video, we will going to clear the concept of keyword arguments plus scope of variables. That's all for this video. Thank you and have a nice day.